Looked in the closet, searched high and low Time's running out, I gotta go Before the rodeo, I won't fret Got my boots in my hat, I'm not done yet Hey there everybody, this is Jeffrey G27 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, I got us two builds for Tokyo Expressway. So the first build that I'll be sharing with you guys is going to be the Mazda Miata in a roadster car at Tokyo Expressway with its new engine swap. So in this episode, I'll first show you guys this particular build with this car and how to get the car. And we showed you the parts you need from car customization and most importantly the build and it also will explain on how to either purchase or how to get an engine swap uh, in this first particular build and after we get done with this first build and trust me I think you guys will really like it uh, we'll then switch over to the next build which is going to be the Nismo 400R now I did cover this car a couple days ago I think of last week um, and I failed to realize that, that car I used was a swap variant but for this particular episode we'll be using the stock engine variant and you know making sure it's the right one that i had requested so in this bit i'll also show you guys where to get the car and i'm going to keep the the paint job as is stocked um, i will show you though how to get the car parts that i'll be using for this car and then most importantly the build and the race strategy and yeah, that's going to be it for the episode. So let's go ahead and get started now with the first build. For the Mazda, let's go to Brand Central, click on Mazda in a specific category. Click on Showroom and it should be the third car. Now in my particular build, I do have the second paint job per se as my livery. I didn't really choose a livery for my car, I just mainly chose this uh, Spirit Mazda Racing livery. Now the good thing about this car, it is very affordable. 31,000 credits is the total price of the car, but if you plan on buying the engine swap, you need roughly around at least 2 million credits is my regular doing. Maybe between, let's say, 1.8 mil to 2 mil should be a safe margin for you to fully get this car build uh, complete. But that's how you get the car. It's an FR drivetrain. Everything else we're going to ignore. Uh, simply because we're going to get the engine swap for this car. Let's go ahead now and move over to GT Idle. And what we're going to do for this next build is we're going to go ahead and add the wide body uh, to the car. It's going to be a small fee of 5,000 credits. Um, it will lower the PP once you do that, just for a few little points. Um, but after you get that installed, we're there going to focus on the engine swap, which is going to be the worth 1.75 million credits which is going to be the legendary 7878b now if you want to purchase a swap uh, the first thing you need to make sure that you're a collector level 50 that's the only criteria you have to meet in order to do that and you can tell it is overall a rugged buff for this car uh but let's say if you're not level 50 just yet in the game but you want to figure out how to get that free swap so what you're going to do is go to tuning parts at your garage and unfortunately, I can't really show you, but uh, if you have a highlighted taskbar that says the word compatible in the top right corner, uh, that will let you know that you have that particular swap. Now, if you want a bit more further detailed version of what I'm talking about, you can cl click on the field right there I did a couple weeks ago that will show you on how the buying process and the free swap, how they all work. If you need some more explanation. but. After you get your swap, uh, let's go ahead to GT Auto and go ahead and start with this particular custom parts for the car. Uh, so it's going to be pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Uh, the first thing is of course the wheels. Um, what you're going to do for the wheels is make sure that they're standard. Uh, that's like the very first thing you need to do. Very simple. Just keep the wheels standard as is and just click install. That's all I need to do uh, for the rims nothing really too special about that after you get your wheels situation complete uh, we're then going to go to the custom parts and if you guys are curious on what the parts are the front is going to be type B the side is going to be type B as well the rear is type B and the wing is custom wing set doesn't matter if it's high low medium height and what in play it is and that's going to be it of uh, the parts from car customization Let's now move on to the build itself. Uh, we're, we're using that Tokyo Expressway. We're going to be using Sport Hards as our main tire compound in this race. 
uh, you do need to get the uh, fully customized uh, differential. 5, 15, and 5 is what you're going to have. Downforce, the front is going to be 41. The rear is going to max out 400. The ECU, just keep it at 100. Power restrictor, it's going to be 89. Uh, the transmission, you're going to keep it normal. And pretty much the last thing you need is a certain angle adapter with increased by Richard D, and that's going to be it for the build. So, the question is how good is this car? Well, one thing I would like to point out is for this particular build is that even though we still got a lot of horsepower in this engine, um, two things to really point out is one, uh, you, you might have to face a lot of rear tire grip issues where the car is not really getting planted uh, like it needs to be. So you should hear a good bit of rear tire, uh, the rear tires really having trouble with traction, especially in some of those very slower corners. Now saying that, the car does have really good speed. We're talking about potentially overall the fastest when it comes to the main straight line pace. Pretty easy because of the engine. Uh, now a good thing about this car is if you guys know, the Group C's are well known for their really good fuel mileage. So in this particular build, the good thing about this build that you really don't have to worry about making any pit stops. So we're in the good for that. So we already have a huge advantage already as it is. Got a good car, good engine power, don't need to really have to worry about making a pit stop or either fuel out tires. It could be optional if you feel like the car is not really handling all too great. <laughs> Let's say if you're losing control or if it doesn't, you know, feel just as good. We could change tires, but it's up to you if you want to do that or not. But as you can see, the first lap, it's been a good lap uh, all the way up to P3 as we're behind the rear Amera RX-7 car. And of course, the Honda, the leader, has itself a pretty hefty lead, just like always in this particular race. Now, one thing I do like to mention is that this race is actually set on hard mode. Um, I've been using easy mode and I haven't didn't even realized that. I thought most of the time I had it on normal setting, but apparently there was on easy mode. It's just that they made this race so much <laughs> more difficult. I mean, the easy AI are just, you know, a little bit different than uh, an easy AI in a different racetrack or a different race, which is kind of not surprising. I mean, they really don't want to encourage you to do all these kind of runs and builds and, you know, grinds, especially in this racetrack. But first stop complete, it's going to be a 219.3. We got ourselves a quite a good bit of steam. A compared to the rear mirror. I'm going to make an easy pass on the inside of the rear mirror, pointing us to P2. And you can see we're going to be well over 12 miles per hour, so that in fact will easily claim us as the fastest car on the main straights. Uh, so that's really good. So we're going to go ahead now and fast forward to lap number 3, right at the end part. And you can see we caught up with the race there, so it took us a little bit longer than usual. Uh, but like I said, the hard AI, they actually do drive the track a, little, a lot better compared to the easy ASA, but as you can see, we're going to get the main straight easily, get the lead away from the Honda, and basically never look back to after that. So lap four is actually going to be our hot lap for the race. What I'm going to do is let you guys watch the rest of this clip, and then I'll get you guys back once we get to the end of the race.
So we did a 208.67, which I thought was pretty decent for this car. Now you can see the tires did manage to hold up, even though there was a good bit of wear and tear on the rears of the car. And you can tell the lap times did eventually drop. But considering that, uh, the car just did very good. A little bit loose, oversteer uh, feeling at the end of the race. But considering that, 2602 is what we were able to manage to put on the board, which I'm actually pretty pleased overall for this particular build. So if you guys actually do have the swap, or if you have the level to do it, I really recommend trying it. And just try it out for yourself and just see what it could do. If it doesn't do too good for you, then I really recommend saving it for the ball. Alright, so our next build is going to be the, the Nismo 400R. And you can see it's back into the game. It's going to cost you about 1.8 million credits uh, just to grab this car at the Legends Car dealership. Uh, now, like I mentioned before, as we got to the episode beginning, I am going to keep the Midnight Purple paint job. I thought it was a pretty special paint job uh, for this car, so I decided it would be probably just a, a nice touch uh, just to have that paint job. But as you guys can see, the stats overall are pretty decently good. Um, it is around the 540 point range, so we actually are allowed to add a couple parts to this car uh, to really make it close to that 600 criteria. Good stats, all-wheel drive train, turbocharger, uh, 3,400 pounds, and 300 plus on the horsepower. So, if you guys are wondering what the parts I'll be using for this particular car, let's go ahead and get started with the wheels. Now, the wheels are actually going to be the newest wheels that they added to the game. Uh, that made its debut back in update 1.50, I believe, or 49. So, what you're going to do is go have it wide, wide, and 16 inch. It's going to, or 17 inch, excuse me. It's going to be the rim selection. Uh, for the custom parts, the front is going to be type B. The side is going to be type B as well. The rear is type A, and the wing is going to be type A as well. And uh, last but not least, the roll cage is going to be type C, and that's going to be it for your parts at car customization. So let's go ahead and get going with the build itself. Sport hard tires is what I was able to use for our main tire compound. Suspension, you're going to keep it stacked at normal. Fully cut, stabilized differential, 5 for torque. For both the front and the back, 15 for acceleration and a 20 uh, for the braking. For your torque filtering sensor, I got it at 2575. For your downforce, it's going to be 78 for the front, 330 for the back. Uh, for your ECU, we're going to have it set to normal stop. You do need the power restrictor at 83. Uh, fully customized manual transmission. Top speed on max is going to be 350. High RPM turbocharger. Uh, we're going to have the steering angle kit as well. Racing clutch with flywheel and white reduction stage one, two, and three increased by a rigidity, and that's going to be it for the build. So, that's actually a good bit of parts for this car. Uh, but the question is going to be how good is this car with all these parts? Well, uh, with this car, it was overall pretty decent. I mean, I won't say it was like the best, best car um, that I've driven in this race, but it was decently good. It gets, it, it gets the job done, but. Uh, starting off with acceleration, you can see it did take us a little bit of a while uh, just to catch up with the Viper and the uh, Aston Martin. So that's one thing to take in consideration. But once we get out of the tunnel, we actually were able to get our speed up and going and we were able to make some few little passes as we get to our first breaking point. Uh, but the car, I would say, is probably the, roughly the third fastest or the fourth fastest on the list when it comes to speed. First breaking point. We're going to send it deeply into the corner, a little bit too deep, but uh, thankfully we were able to keep the nice spot from the Toyota uh, Supra. And the main thing for this particular build was to make sure the car handled good. I mean, I wanted horsepower, but at the same time I wanted to make sure the car actually handled decently well. Um, because all wheel drives tend to be a little bit on the understeer side, so I made sure that I did have the right parts for this car just to make it a bit better. And I think it did work. Um, I could tell the car actually did have a pretty nice flow, a pretty nice handling as well. It didn't feel tight, uh, thankfully, or understeery. Um, unless it was behind the car and if it had dirty air, then I could understand it being a little bit understeery. But as long as it had good clean air, and as long as no one was in front of me, the car actually did feel pretty good to drive. But as you can see, we made it up to P6. We're going to get closer to the newer GTR, but we're going to get a, a bad uh, dirty air 
going to affect us a little bit as you can see the car is had a little issue not turning in but we get a good corner speed out of that corner we're going to find ourselves right beside the GTR we're going to use the Supra as a pick and grab that spot away from the GTR we're going to move ourselves to P4 as we get behind the older Impreza we're going to be right at P4 as we finish the first lap so not too bad of a first lap for us uh, in this race the car felt really good to, really smooth to drive uh, may not be the fastest like the newer GTR or the NSX but um, with that handling it does have a lot and not to mention but this car actually also has a pretty decently good fuel tank as well so as we get done with the first lap it's gonna be P4 it's gonna be right at 221 here comes the newer GTR it's gonna quickly fly by past this it's gonna get a bit loose for it, so we're gonna take advantage and just get right behind it uh, get that nice upstream from the GTR try to get that extra speed from it we're gonna get ourselves just some clean air as we can as we get to the corner we're going to send it down in this corner down the second gear we're gonna be side by side get a little bit loose be right beside the GTR and we will actually retake P4 away from the GTR so really good uh, that we were not able to lose too much time doing that so we actually recaptured P2 and it looks like we got ourselves a good shot to get P3 um, in sector 2 as that's not my, that's my se favorite sector uh, in this track so we're gonna go ahead and grab a lot of time on the Impreza be right behind it get ourselves a much more better momentum and just mainly force it to mistake and get ourselves P3 right at lap 2 Two laps later, we're going to find ourselves in a spot with the rear meh, literally at the same scenario. And we're going to be a little smart with this. We're going to follow it, and we're going to make ourselves a line. We're going to force ourselves to the far right and get ourselves P2 right about halfway to lap 4. And then we're going to go ahead and fast forward again a lap later at lap 5 into that chicane. We're going to grab the lead away from the Honda and basically didn't look back we're going to fast forward to lap number 10 it's going to be our hot our pit stop per se we're going just to come in pit row just for fuel the tires held up very nicely and like I said the car does have a really good gas tank so we were able to last pretty long uh, without having to worry about ref refueling now it could make it all the way without a pit stop um, if you're curious my guess is probably a few map three might be might do the trick but I'm not too sure but with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and finish the race at a quick 26-29. So, overall, decently good pace overall for the car. Um, felt very smooth. That was the main objective for this build. And even with the hard difficulty AI, we actually finished off P2 right around 40 seconds. So, the car just felt really good. Really smooth car. Uh, pretty quick, especially the uh, cornering speeds. Um, may a little bit contact, but other than that, uh, that's going to be it for both fronts. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. And here's a quick preview of the next episode. We're going to be using the Mazda Roadster uh, swap at Tokyo Expressway. So that's going to be one of the two builds we'll be using. So in the next episode, I'll be covering where to find the car and, and go through the main stages of the engine swap. And yes, the Roadster also has the 778B. But it's going to be quite a different tone. Um, so it's going to be quite different than the this episode uh, in a Miata. So that's going to be one build we're going to be doing for the next episode. And after we get done with this particular uh, Miata Roadster build, our next special request is actually doing the half hour race at Rolanta. And I'll be using it with the Super Formula 23, which I know is a pretty odd pick for that race, but... I'll be showing you my strategy with this wonderful car at Toronto Atlanta with that challenge race, which hopefully will help you guys a lot if you guys are still struggling with that race. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. If you guys like to, like to check out the last episode I covered with this combo, you're welcome to do so. If you guys enjoyed the episode, want to like. If you guys like to subscribe to the channel, you're more welcome to do so too. So with that being said, hopefully you guys have a great rest of the day or night to where it might be, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.